Good afternoon all. So here's the problem. Solar panel in full sun, a rare thing. But let's head into the workshop. And the problem I have is that the power bank that that panel is connected to is full, completely fully charged. So that means that that solar panel out there isn't doing any work. So what I want is to have a situation where if a power bank is fully charged, then it gets discharged and I have the perfect thing into which to discharge all that energy. And that is ant miners, because they soak up the energy and turn it directly into cash. So let's take out the MC4s that are going into this power bank because there's no point in them being in there. And then I'll reconnect those to the Bluetti AC200, which is down on the floor. Right, that's connected up into the connector on the side there. But, oh dear, this thing's 100% full. So I'm still not using the solar energy from that solar panel. So let's hook up this miner and I've been doing some soldering. So I've made this. Um, this is one of these minor PCBs, which I pulled a couple of these six-way connectors off and soldered the wires into the board directly. And those are the connectors that go onto the hashing boards and the controller board of the cryptocurrency miner. Oh, sorry about the messy bench. By the way, I've been doing a lot of moving stuff around recently. And then I soldered on this XT60, also in place of one of these six pin connectors. There's a four pin connector there, I'm not sure what that's for. Um, so there it is, soldered. I used all three pins on, uh, I think that's positive on the inside, and all three pins on the negative. So that should carry the current. That mine is going to take probably getting on for 20 amps. And that XT60 connector goes, connects to this. Now this cable came from Bluetti when they sent me this power bank. And ooh, that plugs into this output, the DC output, 12 volts, 25 amps. Now the problem with this is that it's not 12 volts. It's a sort of engine running 12 volts. So it's actually 13 and a half volts and the ant minor um, voltage specification um, is generally just marked as 11 to 13. So it's not very precise. Um, so will 13 and a half volts do any damage to this? I mean, it shouldn't because I get the impression, I mean, on the controller board, it's mostly going to be 12 volts down to 5, well that should handle 13 and a half. On the hashing boards, I think it goes lower because I think the the hashing chips um, take quite a low voltage in order to get the high speed. I think they hash it, or well, the clock is 500 megahertz. So anyway, I'm going to plug this in to the 13 and a half volts because I'd quite like to run this from this output. Like I say, I think it's going to take about 20 amps, so this is ideal, 12 volts at 25. And we'll get that started. We'll try and get that 100% down a bit. And then that solar panel will do some work. And I'll get some money. Right, I've got the uh, 12 volt or 13 and a half volt cable. So this is just being used as a connector to convert XT60 into... Oh, no, what are these called? They're some sort of Molex, I think. It's the PCIe uh, high current 12 volt connector. That's connected into the output of this. I've got some Ethernet on the miner. I'm just going to switch this on. DC on. Away goes the miner. So that'll do its boot up, which is a pretty noisy affair. So I'll come back after that's done. Uh, that's it during its test phase. So that's about the noisiest it gets. This one's actually quite quiet once it settles down. Right, that's... Um, running at it sort of cool speed as that warms up the fan will increase in speed a little bit but not hugely so as you can see um, bottom left where it says DC load 
it's drawing 240 watts at, um, well, I think it's about 30 and a half volts. So you can do the maths. As I remember it, in fact, we can have a look. Data, uh, inverter and chargers, DC output, oh, missed. This is a resistive, oh, this is bad. It's a resistive touchscreen, hold on. Inverter and charger, DC output. So there it is, 13.4 volts, uh, 240 watts, and the current is around 18 amps. And you can see that it's indicating that on that output, the 12 volt, 25 volts output. But it is a bit high, 13.4 volts. But this should get the state of charge, which I don't think is on this screen. Let's go back. Uh, we should get that to go now down below 100 and then it should start pulling in some charge from the solar panel because that's still connected. Right, the power bank is down to 98%. Uh, there's 240 watts going into the miner. There's 91 watts coming in from the solar panel outside. That's a bit disappointing. Uh, it's mid-afternoon. It's a 240 watt panel. But yeah, only 91 watts. Right, I have done a bit of mining this morning, but only 2 US cents. So we'll start it at 2 US cents. Um, and yes, I suppose the thing I want to do is to run this down, wait till the sun sets, and then run this all the way down. I don't know how long that'll take. And just see how much money I can get with a bit of sunshine coming in and then using up all the energy that this has collected, I think, throughout yesterday. Um, by dumping that energy into the miner, because there's nowhere else to put it. In the summer, this is a constant problem. You fill up all your batteries, and then there's nowhere to put the surplus energy. So having a miner connected to the system, and particularly if it was automated, so that that could come on when the power bank is full, it would automatically shut off when the power bank is empty because they tend to switch their outputs off when they're empty. That would be a nice little system. Now why are we only getting 100 watts from that 240 watt panel? Uh, let's go and take a look at that. Uh, there's the sun. I'm filming through a welding glass. I'm not sure what that's going to come out like. I don't really want to point my camera at the sun. But it looks like full sun. It might be a bit hazy, I suppose. And the sun's pretty much on axis to the panel, as you can see from the shadows there. Yeah, it's rather disappointing that we're only getting 100 watts. Well, the numbers on the solar panel are 31.6 volts, 2.7 amps, 88 watts. Those are those numbers. And up here, the solar goes through this uh, watt meter. 31.1 volts, 3.3 amps. There's a bit more current shown here. Uh, of course, there may be losses in all these cables. It's quite a long cable running down here and into the power bank. So, yeah, maybe there are some losses there. 90 watts. Um, this here is saying that it's done two US cents. Now that says that that has cost seven US cents, but that means in domestic rate electricity. Now, of course, the power bank was filled with solar and it's currently being uh, topped up with solar. So you can ignore the seven cents of domestic rate electricity, but you can see that this ant miner on domestic rate electricity would actually make a loss. But I was just waiting to see if I could see if that will go up to cross the threshold to uh, three cents because it only shows it in whole cents on this uh, mining pool. The Z9 Mini is not the most productive ant miner uh, by modern standards. It's pretty pathetic, really, but it's the one, the smallest one that I've got, it's the one that uses the least uh, current or power, which is why I can put it on the 
effectively 300 watt 12 volt DC output on this power bank and drive it from 12 volts DC. I'm not having to step it up to mains and then step it back down to 12 volts. It's DC all the way. There is of course um, a DC to DC converter in this unit because if we look at the battery BMS it's actually 14 lithium ion cells in series so that's a sort of 58 volt actually what's 14 times 3.7 can't work it out in my head but it's a 50 something volt pack that of course is being DC to DC converted down to 12 volts or 13 and a half and that's going to the minor uh, 25 watts on the solar and what's that all about oh yeah that's all about that stuff which we get a lot of in this neck of the woods right so I'm gonna have to leave this thing now so I need to go and get the key for this padlock um, this is a disc detainer padlock of course no one would be daft enough to use a tumbler padlock the disc detainers are much harder to pick so I'll go and find the keys for that I've just noticed that this cable is really quite warm I mean kind of 30 degrees warm yeah <laughs> that's pretty toasty really for a cable um, this interconnecting board no temperature rise on that so my soldering's good um, what are the numbers now 116 from solar, 250 or 240 still going to the miner. And we got thruppence! It's a bit of a mess in here. Lots of boxes, vocoder up there. I'm going to have to do a tour of my workshop one of these days. But it's now big enough that I can store all my rubbish out here and anything valuable. And I've got a feeling this power bank's about two grand's worth. Uh, lock it down just uh, as an anti-opportunist thing shouldn't be necessary I try not to keep anything super valuable in here it's uh, mostly stuff that no one would really want but uh, here are some general shots inside my workshop that's the central column that holds the roof up in the middle oh there are my lights I'm bored now so I'm just sticking pieces of paper in front of the fan to block the airflow and see if uh, this thing realises it's getting hot and makes the fan go faster. I'll come back when it changes pitch. Oh, it just has. And again, yeah it's a bit stupid this so perhaps I'll take that off because actually with the fan running faster of course it's going to draw a little bit more power. Just thought I'd show my coin allocations. Um, I'm mining the script algorithm which is strictly speaking Litecoin and Dogecoin but I get Prohashing to send me Ethereum, Bitcoin, all nine Satoshis of it, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Digibyte which is actually my favourite. I think going forwards I'll probably only mine Digibyte because it's very transportable the fees for transporting it from one place to another are very cheap uh, Bitcoin Cash, Zcash and Dash so it's sending me microscopic amounts of all of those uh, let's scroll up and see what that is in money and it's five US cents so I think what I'm going to do now is leave this here with the laptop and the power bank and the miner down there uh, I'll go inside now and start editing this video and then I'll come back later when the sun's long since gone down and we can see how much it earned emptying this power bank which I think is about uh, 1350 watt hours I think I measured that at so uh, see you a bit later now look at this, someone felt so sorry for me after my feral crimping video that he sent me a gift. 
a gift note from Anthony Rippin. So thank you, Anthony, for sending me this. I don't know how you send people stuff on Amazon, but this is a crimping tool, which appears to have a four way crimp eye. And then there's a whole load of uh, ferrules in there. Should we have a quick look? Presiva. Doesn't that mean thank you or something in Russian? Probably not. That's me being stupid. Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? There's the um, box of ferrule. So let's get that out. Lots of different ferrule types in there. And more of the smaller ones. So these blues might actually be better for the 2.5 millimeter squared wire that I was crimping ferrules onto. And then this thing, which uh, opens up into a square and then as you crimp it, that closes up. So it's going to force it, I presume, into basically a square shape, which seems quite sensible, actually. That's kind of latching. So that's rather nice, isn't it? Thank you very much, Anthony Rippin. OK, it's now ooh, around 6 p.m. And the battery is down to... 58%. Uh, there's no more solar power to be had. The miner is still whirring away merrily. And the cash is now at 10 US cents. Uh, so we could be expecting probably around 18 or something like that by the time this thing's uh, fully depleted. It's now just after 7 p.m. There's 40% battery remaining. And the miner has mined 12 cents. It's now quarter past eight. And there's 22% battery left. And we've done 15 US cents. Right, this is the last visit I'm going to make to the shed tonight. It's coming up to 9 o'clock. 11% left on the battery. But I will run that right down to nothing. And 16 cents uh, in cryptocurrency. So I'll do a final update on my PC uh, in the office once I can no longer communicate with the miner. And finally, the miner has gone offline. I can't talk to that. Let's check the uh, mining pool. And the final amount is uh, only 17 cents. So really, if this is gonna be a serious uh, thing, then it all needs to be scaled up quite massively. Cheerio.